<laughs> oh yeah. I remember those days too, running around, texting people, hoping yeah. for the best. <laughs> And I, I will have to recuse myself from the main agenda item, just so people know. Thank you. Um, if we don't get another member on, that means we would we would need to continue the item then at that point, because we would lose our quorum. Oh, so well. just a heads up. We could still take the informational items though, right? Just not that item? Um, yes, we could still move forward with the rest of the agenda, just not the item, the scheduled item. So Steve could still present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Kevin won't need to step away until we actually get to the scheduled items. So we'll have a quorum until then. Does anybody want to remind our two other people to that we're starting or should we just let it roll? Um, I can email them and see. I'll, I'll have some disclosures but there's nothing that I feel will recuse me. Okay, let me. Yeah, Michelle, if you want to email them, um, I, I, we could probably get the meeting started and just see how it goes. Did they, they RSVP and say they were going to be here? I did not. Oh, here's, we just got Mark. Good. All right. We usually do a quorum check, but we have and a quorum. I, did, I just didn't hear, I didn't actually hear back. Hmm. This go round. Well, I'm going to start up just, well, here we are nine o'clock. Um, okay. I'm going to call the um, waterways committee advisory committee meeting um, to order. And um, we'll proceed with roll call. Okay. Um, let the record reflect that all committee members are present with the exception of Charles Carter and Adam Sharon. Thank you. Um, so I've been asked to read a statement that the city has for board boards and commissions. The city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment. Uh, we will not tolerate speech or actions that disrupt a public meeting or may be perceived as aggressive, demeaning, or harmful towards staff, an applicant team, or other meeting participants. Staff will be monitoring the meeting and ensuring that everyone's participating respectfully. If staff determines that a meeting participant's acting in a disruptive or dis respectful manner, they will be First muted and given a warning. If the behavior continues, they'll be removed. If necessary, we may um, also immediately end the meeting. If participants have any additional questions or concerns, they should reach out directly to the project planner or uh, applicant team. Okay, I'm moving on to item three, committee business. Um, the uh, role of the Waterways Advisory Committee is to review development projects, both public and private, that are located adjacent to creeks and waterways for consistency with the goals, policies, and regulations for creekside development identified in the Santa Rosa General Plan, Zoning Code, Design Guidelines, and the Citywide Creek Master Plan. While the committee does not take formal action on projects, it does provide advisory comments to the decision-making body. All development projects located adjacent to a creek or waterway are required to be reviewed by the Waterways Advisory Committee meeting to prior to proceeding through the entitlement process. Okay, um, next item is the committee reports. Um, and I do not have one myself. Are there any other um, members of the advisory committee that would like to make a report? Okay, um, anyone who would, um, from the public, um, who would like to make a comment on non-agenda items. We're now taking public comments on item four, non-agenda matters. This is the time when any person may address the subcommittee on matters not listed on the agenda, but which are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the committee. Okay, if you have any public comments, please raise your hand now.
Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay. Oh, we're moving right along here. Um, the uh, department report. Um, are there any um, reports from the Planning and Economic Development uh, Department? Yes, thank you, Chair. I do have a, a couple quick things. Um, first, related to staffing, some of you have probably heard by now, but um, Deputy Director Bill Rose has left the city. Um, so we're, we're sad that he's left and um, we're regrouping on um, moving forward with, he was in an interim position. So Claire Hartman is um, serving in that role along with her acting assignment as assistant city manager. Also in good news, I just wanted to announce that Michelle Montoya received a promotion. So she is now an admin secretary in our office and Yay. we're extremely happy for her. And um, she's now supporting our design review board, but will still for now continue supporting our committee and um, our advanced planning team too. So you're not leaving us, Michelle? You're staying with us? All right. Congratulations, <laughs> Michelle, well-deserved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then um, <clears throat> just some updates on various projects. First, our, our general plan update continues to move along. Um, the team is working on um, doing alternatives now. So we're looking at different scenarios for transportation and land use alternatives. So um, those will be fleshed out with um, various studies and sub consultants and then brought forward to the public for another round of public input and meetings. And so that will happen probably in about two months from now. Um, we've, we are also this week releasing a vulnerability assessment that supports our update of the climate action plan. And then last week we kicked off our housing element work. So um, there's a lot going on with the general plan. And then in other news related to policy, um, we have kicked off another process to write an ordinance for short term rentals. Um, so that will be brought forward as an urgency ordinance to the city council in mid October. And there is a survey out right now if um, you all would like to take that and then also encourage others in your networks to uh, fill that survey out. And uh, that's all I have for department reports. Thank you, Amy. How about the water department? Any reports? Yes, I do, uh, Chair and members of the committee. I, I have several updates this morning, and one is from the Creek Stewardship Pro Program annual update, which I think you have all received from Alistair. Uh, and he is he is off on a well-deserved uh, some you know some time off to get ready to help care for our creeks when he comes back. But uh, really, the data included in that report was what he presented. I think at the last meeting or or two meetings ago. So uh, there were, I don't think there's really any new information, but it was kind of, kind of more analysis of the data itself. So just a couple of things, uh, you know, due to COVID-19, we weren't able to do as many large events as we typically do, but we still able, were able to do a lot for our creeks and get things cleaned up. So a couple of the highlights, you know, we had nearly seven, a thousand people involved in creek either cleanups or education events and that equated to about 1300 hours and uh, or 1300 hours of cleanups and actually over 8000 hours of creek based education. Uh, with that as well, like I said, the number of events was curtailed. However, uh, we were able to do more cleanups with our, with our city staff because uh, we were able to work safely in teams and uh, able to get a lot cleaned up. A couple other highlights, we were able to add some more of our creek uh, crossing signs out in the Oakmont area. There was a couple of creeks out there that did not have creek signs. So we were able to do, do that. So I think we're right at about 95% of our creek crossings have a creek identification sign. And we're trying to get the remaining 5%, but a lot of those there's kind of some safety concerns as far as having another sign or we don't have an existing pole or things like that. So we're gonna try to work through those. Uh, the other thing too, just on the amount of trash re 
removed, uh, like I said, we had our vol volunteers out, city staff, but really our supervised adult crews from the county is where we get the bulk of the material cleaned up. And if you count all that together, uh, we were pretty close to about 1,500 cubic yards of trash along our creeks and trails. So just to kind of put that in perspective, an average uh, car garbage truck can carry about 15 cubic yards and it's compressed. But if you look at that on an annual basis, that would be 97 trucks or about a garbage truck every uh a little under four days. So there's a lot of clean cleanups happening. And with those uh, sack, sack crews, we actually had them about seven times a, a month. So usually, you know, once or twice a week, we have them out there and we're able to address issues on creeks in a pretty time timely manner. You know, we get reports all the, all the time about issues on creeks and trash and different things. Uh, and then also just we're able to support our vol volunteer creek stewards out there. And we have a number of uh, pet waste bag uh, stations out there. And we put almost 100,000 pet waste bags were used at these uh, lo locations last year. So I think it's a great effort to help control that and hopefully get those in the trash and not where the pet waste can reach our creeks and also just as, as it always is you know there's a little bit in the report about there's so many community groups and agencies and regional partners and so it's just it's really great to see that and we're continuing that and you know I think everyone is interested to care for our creeks so I have a couple of other up, uh, updates but I can take any questions on this now if there's any there. Yeah, Steve. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the, the report now and it's really impressive, especially the appendices with um, all of the organizations that have volunteered and, and all the activities and education that's going forth. Um, so when I first look at this, I think, wow, there's been a lot of volunteer activity, but we still don't have the volunteer program open to citizens, right? that's still where we are because of COVID? Well, we have it where it's open and we will support a volunteer group to do an activity, but we can't actually have like a city sponsored activity yeah. of more than 10 people in one location. Oh, so you could have smaller? Well, we are supporting smaller, smaller groups and uh, kind of if someone else is leading the event, we're able to help support them oh, okay. and give them gear and remove the trash at the end if it's a cleanup okay. or something like that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Um, the city staff that's being used in the creek cleanup, which department or departments are they coming from? And are they um, going to not be as needed once more of the volunteer work can pick up again whenever we get out of COVID? Yes, those are members of our team. So the Stormwater and Creeks team. So we have been doing more than we typically would, but you know, after, hopefully we'll get to after COVID here, we can kind of go back to more work where we will do some work with our staff, but we will have more of these events with the community and with the volunteers. So, I mean, hopefully we'll end up with, you know, the same amount of cleanups, but helping to support the volunteers. So these are not park maintenance workers who are putting in the hours for the time you're talking about. That is correct with the data that we have, but I'm sure, you know, Parks has their own list of the amount of time and, you know, how, how much they've cleaned up on uh, park areas, which a lot of our parks actually have creeks within them. So on that note, a um, uh, large presentation yesterday at the Board of Community Services was from James Castro, who's the Deputy Director Park Maintenance. I whatever his title is, you guys have, all have titles. And um, he's trying to push to encourage more volunteering in the parks, which um, I, I know that there's, there's more um, support for right now, even though we're still in COVID and we're coming to the end of summer. But um, 
hopefully there's going to be more across the board discussion about that, both with staff and with um, boards and volunteers. All right, well, with that, I have a couple other quick updates. So Creek Week is coming up, and that is September 18th through the 25th, and it's our annual uh, a celebration of creeks and also Pollution Prevention Week. Uh, usually we have some more events and larger community events, but again, we're going to kind of hold things back a little bit because of what's happening in the world. So there will be a Street to Creeks a cleanup challenge where we're encouraging households and small groups to clean up their, you know, their streets, their creeks and our parks or basically any areas. We're going to have a, a virtual tour of Santa, Santa Rosa Creek and I believe a webinar on birds that we see along our creeks and we'll also have some kids activities that will happen uh, and these will be on Zoom and things like that, the majority of, of these. And then there is a utility bill insert is going out with more information about Creek Week. And also if you go to srcity.org slash Creek Week, you can see more information about the events. And then we will be going before the city council uh, here in a couple of weeks to, to have a, a, a proclamation for Creek Week. So that will be happening. There'll be more news to come out on that. And then the other exciting thing is our Lower Colgan Creek uh, Phase 2 restoration. We're about halfway through the construction season and things are going pretty well. Uh, the channel is really starting to take shape and I think it's a little over 40,000 cubic yards of soil have been removed from the channel. And this week the contractor started to put in some of the uh, root, root wads and habitat features within the creek channel. So things are looking good and it's kind of, you know, closed right now as a construction site, but this might be something in the future if we're, you know, back, back in person in the spring, an area where, you know, we can have a, a meeting in the field. That would be great. Thank you, Steve. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I see that uh, Kevin has a question. I just had a comment on the creek stewardship primarily, and Steve, thanks for the for the report. Uh, creek Week sounds great. I just wanted to say the the stewardship report is impressive for how much has been done, even with COVID. And one of the things I appreciated was the more the signage going in. You mentioned the 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 creek crossing signs, but also the mileage markers that the report talked about going in. I think lots of times with public work pro, works projects the public just sees them get older and the signs get older and they look like they're not maintained. And so uh, the fact that new signs are going in all the time and the maintenance is so great, I think tells the whole city that 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 we're still engaged with the creeks and that there are important things going on with the creeks. And so uh, I really appreciate that the ongoing work. So that's it. Thanks. Any other comments or questions by committee members? Okay, thanks again. Steve, can yeah. you confirm Creek Week is September 18 through 25 this, this year? That is correct. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, um, is there a report from the Sonoma Water Department? Hi, yes. Um, Chase Sicaldo here with the uh, Sonoma County Water Agency or Sonoma Water now. Well, welcome. Um, I, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to just go over and highlight some of our our uh, stream maintenance and field operations activities that have been taking place this year. Um, we'll kind of start off with the vegetation management work of our creeks. Um, so we have been working on Piner Creek uh, from Piner Road to Airway Drive, um, Coffee Creek downstream of Piner Road, uh, Santa Rosa Creek from Willow Side to Stony Point Road, um, Pollen Creek, uh, Cleveland to Hardy's Lane, um, Austin Creek, Acacia to uh, Middle Middle Rincon Road, and then Sierra Park Creek um, upstream of Hohen. Um, we have we will continue these activities through about our vegetation management activities through um, October mid to end of October, depending on the weather. Um, we've also been fairly active this year in a number of road and access road repairs, um, and so we've been conducting a lot of work on Roseland Creek. Um, Colgan Creek, Todd Creek, and Russell Creek. 
We've also continued to do and kind of finished up our last uh, passes through of all of our water agency channels for our weed abatement and fire fuel reduction efforts. Um, it's been a huge effort and we kind of, we usually make about one, two to three passes through our channels throughout the year with our uh, either our, ha our hand crews or uh, mowers. So that's kind of a very large effort for us to, to make sure we take on every year. Um, also kind of what Steve had touched on regarding the trash cleanup, um, that is an ongoing um, effort that we have. Um, we, right now we um, set aside two days a week to strictly uh, clean up trash with one of our crews. Um, it's an investment of around $25,000 per month. And we're right now on, we're about, we're exceeding or staying on average to achieve about 100,000 pounds per year of trash removed from our waterways. Um, so it is a very large effort. Um, a lot of the trash is, you know, not only sprinkled around throughout the water, uh, the watershed, but we also have a number of hot spots that kind of keep us coming back. Um, but to assist with that and to kind of keep our trash efforts for the most part at a minimum, we also employ two full-time security guards that patrol all of our channels and kind of keep uh, making sure we're staying on top of people that are dumping on our creeks or homeless encampments that are uh, popping up. Um, as we start to wrap up, then at the end of October, uh, we will go into our upper bank pruning phase of our uh, creek maintenance. Um, this primarily is uh, meant for trimming it for trees for fire fuel reduction. Um, we find that the trees really um, respond best to, and it's most it's best for the health of them to do a lot of pruning in the winter. Um, so we will be continuing to do that on all of our water agency owned channels. And that's also a big fire fuel reduction effort. So we remove a lot of the ladder fuels and down woody vegetation uh, during that time of the year. Um, another kind of aspect that we wanted to highlight was our fire fuel reduction efforts along spring or in and around Spring Lake Regional Park. Um, the water agency has been fairly active in this area the past two years. Um, and if anyone knows where the Violetti uh, Road is, and it kind of goes up to a large uh, hillside, uh, that's a water agency owns that property. And we've been using uh, our goat contractors to graze that area for the past number of years, as well as improving uh, road access. So we just finished um, upgrading our road. So now you can actually drive up the hillside and make a full loop around. Uh, we found that that's very useful. Um, for not only management of the facilities, but during uh, our last fires that were in that area, the fire department actually utilized the road that we had just put in a few months earlier to uh, set up a fire boundary and really kind of protect those homes that were um, in and around the Spring Lake Regional Park. Uh, we also just received a grant from the Coastal Conservancy to conduct a large scale maintenance and fire fuel reduction within the Spring Lake Regional Park. Um, so. Over the next few months, uh, you're going to start to see an uptick in water agency staff conducting vegetation management, uh, mowing activities, as well as our uh, grazing contractor will be out on site grazing uh, a large amount of the area. Um, that's kind of our uh, brief update on what the activity is that we've been doing this past uh, few months. I um, wanted to then open it up to any questions that folks may have. Arthur. Yeah, hey, Chase, thanks for the briefing. Um, I, I just have a, um, a comment and a, a question, and you, you may just only be able to refer me. Um, I do walk on, on I'm in Runner Park, uh, my office, and so I walk on Hindball Creek, and I've been able to identify large items, and then I've contacted uh, John Newhouse, and then the, your security guard a person comes by and and checks it and then they arrange for pickup and it's a really good system so i really appreciate that um so that's my comment and then the other question is and maybe you can just tell me who i contact is i'm just concerned with uh, some of the information um in the press democrat that talks about the lake levels and and there the numbers are a little you know for mendocino it's a different algorithm and then who do I contact to, to talk to about that? Yeah, the best person would be our uh, would be Barry Dugan. 
Um, and I can always try to pass. If you do not have his uh, information, I can I could pass it along to you, Arthur. Okay, maybe I can get it from you later. Thank you very much. Yeah. But... Any other questions of uh, Chase or any comments? Thank you for all the fine work between you and the work uh, the city is doing. Uh, I can't imagine what our creeks would look like without your uh, fine uh, efforts. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, our uh, next topic is the main scheduled item, which is the Stony Point Flats Apartments. And um, our planner is Connor McKay, and I believe Andrew Triple is here as well. Um, before we get started, though, I understand there is there are disclosures by committee members or any questions before we actually start the item? Yes, uh, Kevin here, and I'll, I'll need to recuse myself uh, from the discussion. So I will bow out of Zoom and follow on YouTube. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Any others? Anybody else want to make any comments prior to our beginning of this item? Yeah, um, I just have some a couple disclosures. Um, let me just so I I've had business or I've, I've worked with um, a couple of the um, the engineering firms and consultants and and I just want to mention you know I I've worked with Civil Designs, um, Sanquini, and PJC. Uh, I don't it's always on a client my client basis and I don't see any issues with that. Um, further. Um, I have met with the, the neighborhood group that is in opposition to this um, project, and uh, essentially um, just explained what our what the waterways role is and what our jurisdictional uh, coverage is as an advisory group. So those are my disclosures. Thank you, Arthur. Anybody else? Okay. Um, with that, um, we will first have a presentation by. Uh, our planner, Connor McKay, and uh, then we will um, have the applicant uh, speak if they desire, and then we'll go to um, public comment and so on. Okay, why don't we uh, begin with our staff presentation. Thank you, Chair. Can everybody hear me and see my presentation? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Yeah, so... Um, Hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, thank you to the committee. Uh, my name is Connor McKay, city planner. I'm happy to be here this morning to present the Stony Point Flats project to the Waterways Advisory Committee. And as a reminder, this project is located at 2268 Stony Point Road. Um, so the meeting <coughs> purpose is to provide an opportunity for advisory comments from the Waterways Advisory Committee as to how the proposed project may meet the city's goals related to the city's creek master plan, general plan, and zoning code policies and standards. As a reminder, no final action on this project is being taken at this meeting. And then also to provide a little bit of context, um, this project was presented to the committee on June 24th. Um, the committee felt that not enough project information was presented in order to provide comments and recommendations. So um, they requested a continuance of the item to this meeting. Um, this project proposes to construct a new 50 unit affordable multifamily development on an undeveloped 2.9 acre parcel. The project includes the construction of bike storage, laundry facilities, tech center, fitness facilities, and playground facilities. Solar panels will be installed on top of the two main residential structures, which will allow the project to operate at net zero energy in accordance with Title 24. The project is located in the southwest quadrant of the city of Santa Rosa along Sony Point Road. And the is also adjacent to Roseland Creek, which is why we are here today. Here we have the um, proposed site plan that identifies the site layout and the location of the um, site structures. Here is an aerial rending, rendering. Now also, I'll flip through the um, elevation slides um, without a whole lot of commentary. And then just for clarification, the above um, elevation is the rear elevation that is not labeled. Here we have the conceptual landscape plan proposed for the project. And I believe that we have the landscape architect here on the call that can respond to specific questions about this plan. 
And here we have um, the, uh, it's an uh, aerial that identifies the stretch of Rosen Creek and identifies setbacks and the top of bank. Here we have a Roseland Creek cross section. As you can see, there is a retaining wall proposed um, uh, just outside the top of the bank and outside of the existing creek path. Um, no changes are proposed to this creek path or any of the um, parcel that is adjacent uh, owned by Sonoma Water. And the, um, I believe the civil uh, designer on this project is available uh, to answer questions about this specific piece. Okay, is there um, a, a, other comments by the applicant or designer of the project? Is that what you're asking for, Connor? Is uh, Oh, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just saying uh, questions about this. Uh, once we oh. kind of return back, we'll be directed to the um, civil professional. Sorry about that. No, no problem. Um, so we have an addendum to the Roseland Area Sebastopol Road Specific Plan EIR, and that is currently being reviewed by the city. And here's my contact, um, ctmckay at srcity.org, and you can call me at 707-543-4351. Um, in terms of questions that should be directed to me, um, I will respond to questions about city process and um, zoning code compliance and other zoning code standards. Um, we have uh, Steve Brady from Creeks on the call who can respond to questions about the citywide um, Creek master plan. Um, and then we have the applicant team here as well. I do not believe they have any specific um, comments or supplemental presentation to make, but they are available for uh, response to questions. Okay. So unless there are comments um, from the applicant, we can proceed to questions might be handy to have the uh, diagram of the interface between the project and the creek up um, so we can talk about some of those issues. So, Steve, I've got my virtual hand raised if that's... Yeah, please, Arthur. So Arthur. I, I have four, four questions um, and points just to make it this, at this point in the um, discussion. Um, First is a question. Uh, first question is, Connor, you referred to. Can you put the aerial up? Um, you referred to this as an undeveloped parcel. Um, I guess so. Isn't there an existing property on the west side? Yes, that's correct. It's technically not undeveloped. There's an existing residence on site. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then, what stage are we at? Connor in this process? Are we in a preliminary stage? Has it gone to design review? Where is this project and what stage? Yeah, so um, the project received concept design review by the DRB um, in early June, and then we took it to the Waterways Advisory Committee at the end of June, and then um, final design review will take place next Thursday, um, a week from today at the design review. Board. Okay, all right, thank you. And then what changes, are you able to summarize what changes have been made since the June 24th meeting, um, that presentation to make this simpler for us or? Yeah, I think, I think that actually would be best um, summarized by the applicant. Um, I know that we did continue this meeting because the committee felt like there wasn't enough information to provide um, comments and recommendations, but I do know they've made some uh, modifications based on the comments they did hear, but um, I will defer that to the applicant. Okay, before before that happens, Steve, uh, one last point I just want to make. Um, so, on the disclosures form, I had I, I had asked uh, last uh, in June. I felt that there wasn't sufficient enough information, and then um, a lot of additional information was provided. Um, I talked to staff about this, and staff has uh, talked to the city attorney, and they said that there seems to be sufficient information. From my point of view, there still seems to be some things lacking um, where the information wasn't um, filled in completely, but um, I'm gonna defer to a city attorney that's saying everything is sufficient and everything I can see um, that I can determine, I don't have any conflicts, which is my main concern. So that's, I just wanna point that out. Okay, that's all I have, Steve, thanks. 
Okay, thank you, Arthur. Um, so why don't we, in response to Arthur's question, um, uh, ask the applicant to respond to the changes that have occurred regarding the site plan and interface between the creek and the project. See, see if I have one question for staff before we move on. Okay. Uh, Connor, um, th thanks for the presentation. Um, uh, great as always. And um, ju just to be um, crystal clear, um, could, can you um, lay out where we are in terms of the EIR um, for this project? Yeah, so the applicant is preparing an addendum to the uh, Roseland area Sebastopol Road specific plan EIR. And I believe we just received those um, final documents and we'll be reviewing that um, prior to the meeting next week. Okay, so we haven't gotten anything final on the actual impacts um, and approvals or denials. Um, this, the city is still reviewing the addendum, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any questions um, of Connor before we um, have the applicant um, proceed? We can certainly come so, back to Connor at any time, by the way. Just to follow up to Adam's point, um, is there anything in the ERA addendum that would um, make this project come back to, to the our committee? Um, without providing the full review of the document, I wouldn't really feel comfortable um, definitively answering that, but I do not anticipate we would need to um, come back here unless it is, you know, requested of the committee and that's, that's within your power to do so. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, why don't we ask the applicant to then uh, talk about the changes that have occurred since the last meeting and maybe we can get into some of the details of the site plan. Bill, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to members of the committee for, for taking the time to review our project today. Um, I, I won't go too far uh, back through Connor's presentation. Uh, but from a high level, we are uh, you know, proposing a 50 unit affordable housing project here on Stony Point Road. Uh, Connor, if you could put uh, page 10 of your presentation up. I think that might be uh, the most pleasant to look at for everyone. Uh, we've got, so since the last iteration of the project, uh, we've done, the project design team has done its best to incorporate as many of the, the ideas and comments as we have been able to have been feasible for the project into the project design. Um, from a high level, as it, especially as it relates to this committee, um, You'll notice as we work from the, the left-hand side here, uh, that there was a swimming pool involved in the project. So we removed the swimming pool. We are sensitive to uh, the, the ongoing drought concerns um, that seem to be recurring within our state. Um, with the removal of the pool, it also removed an auxiliary building that at the time sat between the, the leasing office building, which is closest to Stony Point Road, and the first of the large proposed three-story residential buildings. This in turn allowed us to slide the entire development further towards Stony Point Road, which allowed us to increase the area that is that will be unimproved and is the existing non-native grassland. Um, it now is approximately 0.9 acres of the total 2.9 acre site. So we're, we're attempting to leave a significant portion of the site uh, undisturbed. Um, looking through this also, as we've been able to do that, we, we started looking at the pervious versus impervious surfaces that are being added to this site. Uh, the site. We, we were able to reduce the impervious surface level to the point where it is now roughly 40% of the project site. So we're, we're leaving approximately 60% of the area impervious. Uh, sorry, pervious. Uh, we have bioretention beds that have been designed within the project to capture and to treat any stormwater runoff that is created by the pervious surfaces here. Um, those would be the primary uh, changes that would would be coming under into discussion here. Uh, today. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, you know, I, I should also mention 
um, from our team. We have Lauren and Michelle Bruggeman from Phoenix Development. We also have our project architect, Keith Labus, uh, civil engineer, Dennis Dalby, our landscape architect, Justin Heacock, and Lori Menaris from DUDEC, who has been conducting our environmental review. Thank you. Um, questions by uh, the committee. I have some, but I, I defer to other committee members first. Are there any by other members? Go, go ahead, Arthur. Uh, are, are you, Phil, thank you very much um, for the briefing. Um, I'd, I'd like to understand a little bit more about the location of, of these small wetlands on this, on this site plan, this proposed site plan. Are you able to describe um, where those were? That's my first question. Sorry, I mute myself here. Connor, are you able to pull up the additional delineation map that was created? I think that's probably our best, uh, best means of displaying the wetlands in relation to the project. Yeah, definitely. Give me one sec. Thank you. Um, just for, um, just as a note, I, I believe this document that I'm about to share was, um, shared with the WAC yesterday. Let's see. Yeah. And, and I saw it. I just, I just don't quite understand if it was interposed on this and I have a better understanding. I just want to see what replaced the wetlands. That's what I'm just trying to comprehend. For sure. There we go. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. One more sec. So this is Lori Menares, if you want me to speak to that figure once Connor pulls it up. Yes, please, Lori. Oops. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Connor. So the four wetlands that are shown here, they're labeled W1 through W4. So those are all features that are delineated as three parameter wetlands, and that's using the Army Corps of Engineers standards. Um, so these are the areas that were verified by the Corps when they conducted their site visit. Um, the shifting of the project boundary to the west towards Stony Point Road has now completely avoided wetland W1. So that one was formerly within the project site boundary, but this allowed us to pull back a little bit and have less impact. Um, additionally, a lot of the wetland, it's kind of the dark blue line at the southern boundary, uh, those all kind of run into each other and some of those are within some of the bio retention areas. So they're um, like the main functions that they are serving. They're not high quality habitat per se for plants or animals, but they um, you know, serve some kind of stormwater like infiltration purposes. So we feel like some of those functions are being replaced by the bio retention features. And then along the northern boundary, that D-1 um, was a, a man-made ditch. And the Corps, Army Corps of Engineers did not take jurisdiction over that feature, but it is um, considered waters of the state by the regional 
Water Quality Control Board and California Department of Fish and Wildlife takes that under their 1600 jurisdiction as well. So that um, the acreage varies just based on that ditch between what core impacts are and what CDFW and water board impacts are. Yes, thank you very much. That's really helpful. Um, and then associated with that, um, could I, so I understand an, another culvert was discovered uh, that crosses underneath Stony Point, which um, increases the flow um, westward, um, which may have an impact on the flood zone um, boundary. Um, I, I'd like to understand a little bit more about how you were mitigating that. Let's just say that it just as it is bringing in the fill and then raising the elevation. And then I just want to understand where that fill is. And then, and then I want to understand if, if the culvert um, does help to um, change the FEMA boundary, what does that do with the fill? It's kind of a complicated question. I'm just trying to get wrap my hands around it. Hey, Phil, do you think you could step in on that one? Absolutely. And, and Dennis Dalby, are you available to speak to this? Hi, Phil. Dennis, yes, I am. Oh, perfect. So, so Art, uh, how you doing? Hi, Hi Dennis. Welcome. welcome. Thanks. So, um, yes, uh, we, we found uh, by studying the Stony Point widening project, um, which is you know adjacent to our to the west to our proposed project, we found that um, as part of that project, a, a additional box culvert was installed under Stony Point Road, which basically doubles the capacity under the road. Um, previously, um, you can see this light blue hundred-year floodplain area, and you notice that it's all backed up at Stony Point. So the, the restriction was that single box culvert that was causing this uh, 100 year flooding. So with, with the addition of that ad additional box culvert from, from what we've seen so far from um, the hydrology and hydraulic calculations done by the city's consultant for the Stony Point project, the 100 year flood is basically contained in the channel uh, which is which is the, the FEMA floodway, the, the orange hatch you see going through the, uh, the Roseland Creek. And um, it, the, the little wetland number four, I think there's a little bit of, of flooding into that wetland number four, but that, that's the extent of, of the improvements that were made to Stony Point Road's box cover. So, so you have a second question on the fill. So yeah, yeah. At, this, at this point, you know, there, right now the, the firm maps from FEMA show this 100 year floodplain. Uh, we have to respect that until the maps are revised. And, and currently we have a hydrology hydraulic expert um, working with the city to file what's called a LOMAR, a, a letter of map revision through FEMA to change the uh, flood maps to what they are currently today with that second box number. Well, well, how, how long, do you have experience with filing a LOMAR? How long does that typically take? Oh, it, it, it all depends, Art. It's, um, you know, as long as, as long as we can get the information from the city, uh, you know, the, the hydrology study that was done for the creek and the box culvert, as long as we can get that information and don't have to recreate it, um, you know, we're looking, we're looking at probably three months or more. Oh, okay. And, and then Phil, will, will, are you going to hold off on this project until you get that determination? Uh, no, it's the, the determination can be made simultaneous to our, uh, construction drawing. So you, for your timeline? Project. Yes. yes. Our gen generally once, once you make a submittal to FEMA for the LOMAR. Um, city building will respect that and uh, they will assume that the map will be revised. Okay, all right, thank you very much. I appreciate the um, comprehensive and fully explained uh, explanations. Fully sure. explained explanation, is that a term? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you. 
Any questions by committee regarding the, uh, the landscaping plan or the fencing issue or anything related to the uh, site plan? If not, we'll proceed to public comment. Okay. Um, at, that, at this point, uh, if you'd, um, we will proceed to uh, public comments on item 6.1. Okay, um, if you wish to make a comment, please raise your hand now. And for our call in participants, um, if you would like to raise your hand, you would press star nine um, and you will have three minutes to speak. Let me get the timer up. One moment. Sorry, bear with me just one second. Um, hey, really quick before we get into the public comment, um, Phil, can you just uh, really quick describe how the project might change if that letter is approved by FEMA? Sure, and I thank you, Connor. I think that's an important point to note here. Uh, you know, the project itself, as we see it, top down on a two dimensional plane, will not change. Our site plan will not change. The building locations, uh, the design of the buildings, they will not change. Essentially what we have is, is an elevation change. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, uh, there's two different markers for elevation when it comes to our, our survey versus uh, the, the FEMA maps. Uh, but you know we've got roughly two feet of fill coming in right now to elevate the surface of the project. That would be reduced down to the existing elevation uh, or the, the grading plane elevation that Dennis ultimately determines is, is appropriate for the project. Uh, but it's, it's simply a vertical change, whether or not we need to add elevation to remove ourselves from the floodplain or whether the floodplain itself is now lower. And, and Phil, I'd like to add on to that. Um, so, you know, the, the elevation, the current elevation of the sidewalk on Stony Point Road is set. Um, we have to match that, we have to match the road. And it, it is, uh, in comparison to the site, it's above the site. So as you come off of Stony Point Road, you drop down into this project site. Um, in order to make uh, accessible paths of travel to the public right of way, there still are, is going to be some fill in that area between the back of sidewalk at Stony Point and the first, you know, the, the leasing office, the first building close to Stony Point. We're, what, what we're hoping is we're hoping that um, with, the, with the new FEMA map and the flood area reduced, that we can reduce the retaining walls on the um, north and south sides of the, of the project. Cool, thank you. And I think with that, we're good for public comment now, Michelle. Thank you. Adam's got a question, Steve. Go ahead, Arthur. Adam has a question. <laughs> oh, Adam, I thought you had a question. Multitasking, Steve. Wait, I don't see I don't see Adam on oh there you are. Okay. Ah, hey. hey Adam. <laughs> Hi. All right. Thank you. Um yes, I remember I have a, a a question. I just wanted some clarification um from the applicant. Uh uh regarding the um the um I was gonna say it's been a moving fence post, but, uh, or, uh, but uh, the, uh, just what's the status of the fencing and, and screening and walls, so both on the north side and the south side? Um, I noticed that there's, some has been removed. It's been, you know, I saw it um, what, a couple months ago at DRB um, and um, noticed that the plans, um, of course, have changed, but just wondering kind of where, where you are. And I know there was a public comment about uh, the fencing. So could you just talk a little bit about where we are exactly in the design process for the fencing? Sure. So. We've got, a, we've got a lot of comments, both pro and cons on, on fencing, what that fencing would be, would it be fencing, would it be a wall? Uh, and, and ultimately we determined that it was better to remove the fencing from the project 
it, we don't see a, any security issues, which we would typically look at with the fencing, um, especially considering the, the parcel to the north is mostly open, mostly vacant. There isn't really anything that you are cutting through the property to get to. On the creek side of the property, we thought that a landscaping buffer was a more appropriate aesthetic for the project and its interaction with the creek than typical fencing would be. So we are, we, and we've taken the comments into consideration. We are looking at, at using as much of the natural fauna, uh, doing a, a, quite a bit of our tree mitigation along that Southern property line in order to attempt to flow the new improvement into the existing creek conditions. Yeah, great, thank you. And then on the north side, it's um, you are now uh, pretty much at um, screen hedging. Um, I do see a, um, a one main gap um, in there, but uh, it's that that screening specifically. You know, one of the main comments we got um, at DRB was um, for the properties to the north about having cars with the head-in parking there, um, and just kind of wondering the status of that. Yes, we will be looking at using hedging along that entire property line to the where there are open stalls pointed in a northern direction. Uh, and of course, the, the hedges that we bring in from day one will be of appropriate height and thickness sure. to sc screen the, the any headlight emission moving north. Uh, from a sound standpoint, it was determined in our, our noise analysis that any noise created by the property would be no louder than the ambient noises of the neighborhood that is currently existing. Yeah, got you on that. Um, what's, the, what's the reason for the gap? Um, oh, about a third of the way to from the uh, west on the, uh, the north parking? Sure, I believe what that is pointing out there is actually the, the lighter green shade in there is actually the bioretention basin on ah. the northern property line. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the hedging would be more so, it's a big file that we're looking at here, but the, there's yeah. a thin line across the top that small circles almost looks cross-hatched with dots yeah. in the middle of it. That, that would be the representative representation of the hedging. So it is continu so, it's continuous the whole time? Yes, yes. It, it opens up uh, around right. the uh, trash enclosure there, uh, but yeah, we do curve it the, back around. There will be screens or walls or the trellis. So, yes. okay, um, great. Well, thank you for clearing that up, Phil. Absolutely. Okay. Should we proceed to public? Is there, are there members of the public waiting to speak? Yes, we do have three members of the public with their hands raised. Let me share my screen. Just one moment. Okay. All right. Oops. Stephen, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute. And if Got you it. could please state your name for the record and begin when the timer begins, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. My name is Stephen Hunter. I live on Trombetta Street, just north of this project site. Um, I guess my main concern is I feel that this project in general has easily half a dozen problems. And I feel like that, that the public hasn't had the adequate two-way conversation with the designers, engineers, planners, whoever, to adequately express all of our concerns or, you know, have things adjusted. I don't, I don't know if it's because of COVID and, you know, we're limited to our three minutes of speaking each or less sometimes, but this project easily has half a dozen major problems. We know from prior testimony that post the Stony Point Road widening, including the extra culvert that the pro that the parcel just north of the parcel in question 
floods, the lady has spoken several times, at least twice. She said that the city of Santa Rosa had to go out there and pump her property. I mean, there should the city of Santa Rosa should have a record of this. They had they killed her tree, uh, one of those heritage oaks, because it was underwater. This is after the culvert was installed. We, I mean, I feel like that we repeat the same things over and over because there isn't a good two-way communication here. Furthermore, there's a petition that I signed. 150 people in this immediate area signed a petition with concerns. I don't feel like that anybody's listening. Where is the city council person? Why isn't he on these in these meetings? This project obviously has intense um, residential concerns, and I don't feel like that the that the people of this area are being heard. In fact, I feel like this project is moving forward in a way that basically treats the public as a nuisance. I have no idea where our city councilman is. I've I've emailed him myself. He doesn't respond. Um, I think that there's an organized group that reached out to him that and he's not responding. I would say we need to put the brakes on this project until we have some adequate two-way conversation and address each and every concern. I do not think that this, you know, talking for you know, three minutes is adequate. I think this project has major problems. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Okay, next we have um, Aaron. Aaron, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute. I'm unmuted. Okay, perfect. If you could please um, state your name for the record um, once the time begins. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erin Reinberg. I own the property to the north of this parcel. And um, I also have major concerns with this project. I do understand that there's a review in place, but I do feel like it's being rushed. Um, and that this board here should pause any further movement on this project until they can review that EIR that just came into the city's hands. Um, we are looking at a Brown Act violation here uh, with rushing information and not giving the public proper access to this information to review in order to prepare for these meetings. Um, the fact that a design review board meeting is scheduled for next week when this committee hasn't even made a decision is not okay. Um, because again, the public's being deprived of access to records and material. Uh, we need time to review the information and this committee here needs to review that EIR and make sure that there is no environmental impact uh, that could be detrimental to the creek and surrounding wildlife. We do have quite a bit of wildlife in the area that will be severely impacted by this project as well. Um, the addendum that Connor McKay referenced is what I'm referring to. There should be no decision taken by this committee today. Uh, the design review board meeting should be postponed for next week until this committee can review that addendum for the EIR and ensure that no environmental impact will be had. Um, and then the public should have time to review that and respond as well. There's no need to rush this project. The developers here have not even purchased this parcel yet. Um, so we are all in hypotheticals right now, and there's no reason to rush ahead um, until this information can be viewed and shared by all. And I would hope that the Waterways Commission will take it on themselves to really think about the environmental impact and do its due diligence to ensure that our flora and fauna are preserved uh, and that this project is thoroughly reviewed um, before any decisions are made. And I think we need more time to do this and have another Waterways Committee meeting to do so. Um, so I kindly and respectfully ask that the Waterways Committee uh, postpone any decision on this project or any feedback on this project and ask the applicant come back again at the Waterways Committee after that EIR has been thoroughly vetted um, and that our concerns are addressed. Thank you. 
Thank you, Aaron. Okay, give me just one second. Okay, next we have um, Ryan. Ryan, you should have a prompt allowing you to unmute. Yeah. And, okay, perfect. And if you could please um, state your name for the record um, once the timer begins. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Ryan Schwab and uh, my sentiment is the, you know, very similar to to Aaron and Stevens. Um, I do want to thank Connor for the presentation and the and the Waterway Advisory Committee for, for reviewing. Um, but I will start off that we are still uh, tremendously concerned with this project. It does seem that the developers and the city are forcing a square peg into a round hole with this project. Um, Stephen did allude to the multiple issues with, with the project. And we're, we're honestly pretty perplexed why an alternative site wasn't selected. Um, you know, all the work that's going into this is, um, it just seems like wasted energy when there's, uh, there's sites out there that wouldn't have such a major impact. Uh, we did, Stephen alluded to it, uh, have that petition uh, north of 150 signatures. The first and fundamental point of that petition was that uh, a site specific ER, EIR should be performed, um, not just an, an addendum to the Roseland uh, Sebastopol EIR that was conducted years ago, that a site specific EIR should be performed before this project is, is approved. Um, it's tremendously important that we get this project right. And we all know this stretch of creek is in peril. Um, both the developers and the city understand this. There is the Roseland Creek Restoration Plan that the city commissioned seven years ago um, in order to kind of restore life and uh, get the creek back to where it should be. There is guidance within this restoration plan. I provided a link to the letter I submitted. Um, it does recommend uh, a 50 foot setback from the creek for the parcel being developed. Um, as of now, we're only at 30 feet, so a 50 foot setback uh, as recommended in, in the plan should be considered. Um, on top of that, we all obviously know about the drought occurring, um, converting even some of this parcel to hardscape um, just isn't right. And you know, most of those wetlands on that map are still being covered up by hardscape. Uh, we're preventing the groundwater recharge. Uh, and even since the last WAC meeting, the 20% uh, water reduction is now mandatory. Uh, the community is doing their part um, in order to reduce water usage, but then at the same time, the city is approving project after project, many within uh, a mile or two from this project. Um, we do have friends on adjacent properties that are still, still on well. And uh, they're deeply concerned that that Hi, Ryan, your your three minutes are up. I'm sorry. Okay, I got most of my points across. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, speakers who would like to address the committee? If anybody else would like to speak, um, please raise your hand now. For our call in participants, it's star nine to raise your hand. And I do see Stephen's hand raised, but he has had his three minutes um, previously. And I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Okay, we'll uh, close the public comment in that case and return this to the committee, um, but I think um, I would ask uh, for a response from our planners um, to any of the comments made um, or letters that we've received. Thank you, Chair. Um, I thought I would start with just um, talking through some of the procedural questions and points raised by the public as well. Um, and just to just to start that conversation, I just wanted to um, 
make it clear on what the purview of our role is as the Waterways Advisory Committee, that this committee hears projects that are adjacent to creeks and is looking for consistency when it comes to a general plan, zoning code, and the creek master plan. But we're really only focused on that interface of the creek itself um, and that component of the project. And um, in this case, this project's uh, review authority is the design review board. So they will be reviewing um, the project and the environmental review attached to that. And so at that hearing, they will be able to um, comment on all things related to that project. Although um, your purview as committee members for WAC, you are able to um, advise and offer comments and offer suggested mitigation as it relates to the creek, if there is anything um, that comes out of this meeting. So I just wanted to make that very clear. Um, also, this project is within a specific plan um, and a specific plan is a very um, streamlined, uh, provides a really streamlined process specifically for housing and that's consistent with state law. Um, so that, that process is already set up. And so if the project is already a permitted use under zoning and general plan, then the, the project uh, final review authority is the design review board. Um, it doesn't actually go through planning commission or city council. So that whole process is set up uh, specifically in the specific plans and within our priority development areas um, because these have been thoroughly reviewed on a policy level and um, environmental impact report level. So, um, and this is actually one of the more recently approved specific plans that we have um, in the city. So I just wanted to note that. So the project after um, your review will go to the design review board and they will be the final decision maker. And then the environmental review for that is um, usually mostly the specific plan. So most of our projects are fully streamlined as long as they're consistent with that specific plan. In this case, um, because the, of the density bonus, um, there, there is an addendum that's being prepared, but a CEQA addendum is really um, respecting what was already reviewed under the specific plan, but it's supposed to capture any changes or differences that may be present. And in this case, there are very few changes or differences, but all of that will be contained within that addendum document that will be provided to the public and the design review board um, for that full disclosure and conversation at the design review board. So um, just wanted to clarify those things for you and I'll, I'll uh, pass it over to Connor for um, any other comments you'd like to make. Um, yeah, so um, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, so these, the Roseland Creek restoration concept plan does recommend a 50 foot setback, um, but also what it does say is that all uh, standard zoning code exceptions apply. And um, there's a zoning code a section, zoning code exception in the Creekside Development Standards um, code section that identifies for channelized waterways, which the Citywide Creek Master Plan identifies reach number three, which is the reach that is adjacent to the project um, as a channelized waterway. Um, so where a fully channelized waterway exists and the channel is owned by or under the control of Sonoma County Water Agency, agency structures may be closer to the top of bank than a distance of 2.5 times the depth of bank plus 50 feet, which is the standard um, setback. So basically it's saying it can be closer than the setback, provided this encroachment will not obstruct or impair the channel's hydraulic function, impede Sonoma County Water Agency access or maintenance, impair the stability of the slope bank or maintenance of the channel or impair the stability of the slope bank or creek bed fountain all as determined by and approved by the planning and economic development department the public works department and sonoma county water agency and we have received approvals from the planning and economic development department and the um, public works department and we are completing consultation with sonoma county water agency and i believe they are all they are on this call as well um, to provide any um, clarification as to where they stand in their review of this project. And um, I believe that's kind of the only project specific question or um, comment we received. The other questions were more processed and um, kind of more general, but I'd be happy to um, 
revisit any of the questions um, again and, and provide further clarification. Well, committee members, do you have any um, follow-up questions you would like to ask? Uh, if not, we will proceed to uh, recommendations. Yes, Adam. Thanks, Steve. And uh, thank you, Amy and uh, Connor. Um, a follow-up question, uh, maybe a, just a super ultra crystal clear um, clarification too. Uh, so we are pro, um, advising and not making a decision today, just so everyone is clear on that. So the, the public is, is clear that we are um, not making a decision at all. So um, and providing comments, correct, Amy? Correct. Okay, great. And um, to follow up on your uh, um, clarification of the process, and thank you for that. It was um, really great for everyone to hear um, that um, and that it's going to be coming back to the design review board. Will all of will the addendum um, and all of this relative in, uh, pertinent information be coming to us? Uh, uh, good. I'm on the design review board in case anybody doesn't know. Um, uh, coming to us uh, net for next week's meeting when this is coming back to us? That is correct. Okay, thank you, Connor and Amy. Okay, um, okay, so um, that's when the, you know, uh, if, okay, great. That's my, what I was looking for, thank you. Arthur, you have a question? Yeah, um, so we heard public comment that um, the area recently flooded with the second culvert. And so now I'm really curious about the timing of everything. You know, I'm familiar when Stony Point Road was expanded. Um, so was the culvert discovered at that point um, and then unblocked? Um, or was it installed at that point and then allowing through? Um, I'd just like to know the timing on when that area on the west side of this project flooded and if that culvert was functioning at the time. Um, yeah, one sec. Let me see who uh, would be best suited to answer that. It looks like Steve. Are you able to respond to that? Yeah, to my knowledge, I have not heard about that flood flooding issue there. So a little bit of a assumption here, but I would assume it's kind of some localized flooding on the west side of the property to the north of this pro project. But, you know, this culvert under Stony Point Road has been in for a couple of years now since the completion of the road widening. So if if water is able to get to the creek, I think it will flow flow through and there will not be an issue. So, uh, you know, I think it's more of a question for transportation and public works, but uh, that's what I know about the area. I guess my comment, um, my advice or comment is for the DR board, DRB board to take a look at that um, and make sure, because. Um, I'm familiar with FEMA maps. I'm familiar with the lines that are drawn and I know that they're not always representative of what actually happens. And so it seems like it's in the best interest of everybody involved is if um, that area did flood with that culvert in place um, and the city responded, um, that's important information for the developer um, to understand. So I'm just uh, pointing that out right now. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Any other questions of um, staff before we proceed to the uh, recommendations? Seeing none, uh, Arthur, would you like to just uh, continue on here and uh, give your recommendation? Okay, yeah, so this is, I, I, I wasn't familiar that um, projects under the jurisdiction of the specific plan um, went to the DRB um, to, for final approval and never, went to the planning commission. So Amy, thank you for that. that was something I didn't quite understand. Um, it, it seems like most of this, uh, most of this information is gonna intersect at the DRB. I think there's still some um, things that are questions um, perhaps with the uh, DIR that may modify the specific plan and, and inform the DRB um, that I'm, I'm a little, I've already expressed my concern about, you know, the timing on this this flood that this flooded area that may have occurred with the culvert in place, and so I think that's going to be important for the, uh, the DRB to get as much information as they can about that. 
Um, everything else that I've had questions about um, have been addressed. Um, and so um, I, I thought it was pretty interesting and it was a good call on the developer to take out the swimming pool, um, given that the drought is occurring. Um, I think the, the city needs to, you know, look at how things go forward with our reductions in water with a forecast of further reductions and how these water algorithms that are, are forecasting our water demands in the future may not be as accurate as they were when they were developed years ago. Uh, so it, it was pretty proactive of the developer to do that. Um, and so I just have some questions that are still unanswered, but I, I, I don't think we have answers for those right now. And I think um, um, hopefully the DRB will address them. Thank you. Carol, would you like to give your recommendation? Thank you. Um, Amy, thank you so much for the information you provided and Connor also. I had a interest in knowing what all agencies and how far up the food chain the um, review of the floodplain and the creek itself went. And it sounds like it goes all the way up to the federal level with FEMA. So you have um, the feds, the state, the county and the city all giving more than lip service to this project. They're definitely concerned about um, both the environmental and the potential disaster implications of what could happen if we have severe flooding on the west side of Santa Rosa. And I put a lot of um, stock in those learned reports and analysis. Um, they know much more about this than I do, but uh, I do think it's very important that this be thoroughly reviewed, especially as a potential precedent center setter for additional projects of this nature on that side of town. That's it. Thank you, Carol. Adam. Great, thanks, Steve. Um, and thank you, uh, um, Connor and Amy for the information and the applicant for um, the updated plans and presentation. And thank you to the public for, for coming and being persistent on this because um, uh, we do listen to your concerns. Um, uh, I will uh, um, reserve a lot, m many of my comments until next week at the design review board, anything related to design. Um, but uh, in terms of the, um, how it relates to this committee, um, it, uh, the, I feel like the, the applicant is, 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 is um, putting in great strides to comply with, with all of the regulations um, and concerns that are here. Um, uh, and um, I would, you know, I encourage them to continue with that and I have every confidence that they will. Um, uh, let's see. Um, um, in terms of the, yeah, the, I think the, the layout and, and the um, actual um, uh, you know, kind of the, 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 my initial thoughts in terms of how the, the landscape, um, interfaces with the waterways and the creek there, um, one, um, uh, suggestion would be to, uh, take a look at the plant palette and the screening that is on the, um, the creek side and, and, uh, you know, you know the, we, we're, we're, delving a lot into the nitty gritty of the site preparation and site and the, the floodplain and everything, which is all very important. Um, but kind of setting that aside and moving on to the actual um, project itself, um, having the um, having your your proposed landscape to really um, talk to the the your creekside context and bring in some of the riparian um, plantings, the uh, potentially um, uh, seasonal wetlands, vernal pools, uh, landscape um, concepts, and um, and plant palette. Um, the a lot of you know the 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 trees that you have. You know, um, I can encourage going um, with the with a native palette and a native riparian palette um, as much as possible. Um, um, granted, we're not 
in the, the, the riparian zone, but there are certain things that you can do, um, you know, looking at um, you know, things like the um, uh, blue elderberry, things like that, really um, that, that talk to the actual, um, the, the landscape directly adjacent to where you're, you're, you're planting. And also the, the um, something to be sensitive to the concerns that are being brought up by the public um, and, you know, but very valid ecological concerns of looking at the, um, you know, the, the vernal wetlands that, that we've got here, um, even if they're small, even if, you know, some of them are um, human um, built, um, this is a, a disappearing resource in the, the Laguna um, area. And so um, really um, uh, incorporating the, the plant palette for seasonal wetlands into what you're actually planting um, and looking for. I know you have um, the interpretive zone um, uh, and uh, it's a, it's, you know, it's a nice nod. It's pretty small um, and it's, it's disconnected from the actual Creekside habitat. I wonder if you um, can expand that a bit more, if you can extend into the um, unimproved area. You have that, the very east side of the property that is now just um, going to be existing non-native grassland um, with no improvements. I mean, that right there is a, um, with all of the, the, um, uh, the thoughts that you're, you're getting from the surrounding communities, um, that right there is a, uh, you know, kind of a, a good faith, could be a good faith um, uh, area of cooperation and interpretation um, to expand um, an interpretive zone into that um, non-native grassland area, potentially thinking of some small scale restoration project, um, you know, it, incorporating something where you can actually go in there. That does add um, cost and design and everything, but um, you know, you're, you're, you're receiving a lot of uh, pushback. And so um, thinking of ways to, you know, ameliorate, this is just kind of thinking creatively um, in ways. Um, and as far as the, um, for the public, um, uh, please, uh, please uh, come back um, and keep an eye on the design review boards uh, um, postings on the legislative portal, portal for the um, city of Santa Rosa, where we have the agenda and all the attachments and all this information we post on there. Our meeting is next week, next Thursday at um, 4.30. And um, please keep uh, um, sending your, your um, feedback to, um, to, to our board um, and also to um, you know um, keep knocking on the door of your city council member um, to really get some some feedback. Uh, um, unfortunate to hear it, it not getting response back, but you know keep keep knocking on the door um, because um, your concerns are valid um, and um, um, we we do listen to them. So um, and uh, um, I look forward to seeing uh, the. Um, expanded inf information uh, next week at the Design Review Board. So uh, thanks very much. Those are my comments. Thank you, Adam. How about you, Mark? You're muted. We can't hear you, Mark. Okay. I too would like to thank Amy and Connor for uh, the um, laying out the responsibilities and purviews of the committee. And um, also for the, uh, the members of the public for taking an active role. That's a, like Adam said, it's a very important part of, of the whole system and encourage you to, to keep doing that. Um, based on what I've heard today and the, the corner of the, the, the bit of the project that, that falls under our purview, um, I don't have any recommendations um, at this time. I do look forward to hearing what happens from the uh, design review board uh, next week. Thank you, Mark. Um, like others, I, I want to thank the staff for their presentation and analysis, the applicant for responding to um, concerns, um, and particularly the public uh, for participating. Your comments do matter, and we are listening, and um, it is important to be there, as has been mentioned. Um, regarding the project, I'm generally supportive of what has been done. Um, the landscaping um, is much more clear, that interface between the project and the uh, creek. And um, I would, though, agree with um, Adam regarding 
um, an emphasis on as much native and riparian landscaping as possible on that interface. Um, but I am generally supportive of the project and the way it's been designed. Um, and are there any other comments before we adjourn the meeting by our committee? Okay, well, thank you all. And um, I'm going to adjourn our, our meeting of the Waterways Advisory Committee. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Okay.